Sydney is a city that loves the water. All of its most iconic landmarks are connected by the harbour. So what better way to see this great destination than on a luxury yacht? Sydney by Sail are basically an on-water charter company uh, taking people sailing on Sydney Harbour, whether it be joining a scheduled cruise for a three-hour hands-on sightseeing sail or chartering a luxury hunter yacht to go out for four hours or eight hours or, or even overnight with a, uh, for a romantic occasion for someone special. Uh, we supply all the bedding, linen and catering and you spend a night on board under the stars. So what sort of sights do you generally show people around the harbour? Well, we sail past all of the, the bays and beaches on the harbour, uh, past all the historic homes and luxury buildings, some famous landmarks such as Fort Denison, uh, a couple of islands, Clark Island and Shark Island, as we make our way out to the Sydney Heads. Uh, so uh, there's plenty to see. You see some dolphins, some whales, fairy penguins, uh, but, um, and we've even seen seals on the harbour. The water's that clean. When people come sailing with us, they really can get as involved as much or as little as they like. Uh, they don't have to lift a finger, but if we welcome them to, to uh, take, the, take the wheel and steer the boat or pull a few ropes, um, learn a bit about sailing, uh, learn a bit about Sydney Harbour. Well, I'm quite a hands-on sort of girl, so uh, I want to get involved and uh, try my hand at sailing. Excellent. Sure, let's get the sails up and running. Good stuff. So, are they packed away? Do I need to get them out, shake them out, get the moths off? No, the nice thing about these modern boats is that there's really only a couple of ropes to pull. Really? So I'm going to pull the first one okay. and I'll get you to pull the second one. Great. I'll watch it happen. I really enjoy Sydney Harbour because you can, you can go out there on a beautiful sunny day, you can sail to a secluded beach somewhere around the harbour, you can swim or row ashore and you could be the only person on that beach, yet you're always within sort of uh, uh, view of the, the, the city skyline, uh, which changes whether you go out by day, by evening, by twilight, um, there's always something different to see on the harbour. Uh, it's great taking a quick swim on the harbour, the water's crystal clear, um, it, just, it's just, it is a focal point to the city. And one of the newest and most intriguing attractions to both the city and the harbour is this place, Cockatoo Island. And Cockatoo Island is the largest island in Sydney Harbour. It's got an interesting history. You could call it Sydney's Alcatraz. It was originally a convict prison um, and it was for the worst of the worst offenders that had already come to Australia and had re-offended. So its convict heritage is really important. Um, the whole island is heritage listed, but its convict area is actually up for world heritage listing. Um, so it was a convict prison from the 1830s onwards. At that time they also started um, blasting out some of the, the sandstone to make docks. So it started its shipbuilding heritage at that time. Before the First World War um, it became a government dockyard and the two big slipways were, were built where they launched great big warships. Um, and it was a dockyard, a functioning dockyard, until 1992. So now we operate the island as a place of recreation. You can come over on the ferry and it's just a great journey over from Circular Quay. It's only eight minutes. Um, and you can camp. You can camp right on the water and you see the most fantastic sunsets and sunrises. You can also kayak from the island or land your kayak on here if you're already on one. Um, and you can just, you know, roam around the island and enjoy the views. Well, look at this. I'm camped right on the water's edge. It's absolutely beautiful. And no Aussie experience would be complete without a good old Aussie Barbie. And so, after a long, lazy lunch watching the boats sailing up and down the harbour, it's time to take things up a gear or two. Yes, a jet boat offers a pretty unique way to enjoy Sydney's harbour, travelling at speeds of up to 50 miles per hour. Well, the 30 minute experience around Sydney Harbour, going around at 80 k's, throwing the boat into 270 degree spins, power brakes, fishtails, surfing the ferry wake, we even jump off the ferry wake, get a bit of air if we can. And as you're going around, you're ducking in and out all the bays and coves, seeing the harbour. Great sights to see out there, you've got Shark Island, Fort Denison, you even got the Kirribilli House for the Prime Minister, going out towards the heads, caught a bit of swell off that, jumping off that. Coming back around and as you've got the Opera House out there, you've got the Harbour Bridges you're coming back in and a great view of the whole city. and it's incredible that you can do that right in the heart of the city.
Back to cruising speed now and on one of the famous passenger ferries that runs throughout the harbour. Used by visitors and Sydney siders alike, they're an iconic part of the harbour and the perfect way to get to my next destination, Taronga Zoo. Taronga Zoo is an amazing zoo that's been open since 1916. We're located on the harbour here in Sydney and it's got a range of amazing, I suppose, international animals and also native species. All the Australian wildlife contenders are here. Kangaroos, echidnas, koalas, wallabies and platypus. And they're just some of the many animals to be seen. What an absolute privilege to be able to get this close to Australian wildlife. Visitors can also take a sky safari to get a totally different perspective on the wildlife. Conservation and education are also very much at the centre of the zoo's principles, something I found out when I visited the animal hospital. So tell me about this little chap. <laughs> well, this is Darwin, he's a koala. Mm -hmm. uh, he was born at the zoo, oh, okay. um, but unfortunately his mum was unable to feed him properly, so he was hand-raised by a keeper from only a couple of months of age. Okay, I mean, he looks so cute and cuddly, but I can see those claws. You shouldn't really touch them if you see them in the wild, should you? You definitely should not approach them if you see them in the wild. Um, they have very sharp claws, and as you can see, <laughs> they Take do a have chunk very sharp... out of you. And what will happen to him? Will he stay here? He will stay here. Uh, Taronga's part of a, um, a breeding program. Koalas in New South Wales are listed as vulnerable, and so we're part of a breeding program um, to potentially release koalas back into the wild in the future. So it looks like I'm feeding a little kangaroo, but it's not a kangaroo, is it, Brett? No, it's actually a type of wallaby called a quokka, and they're very a small. Quokka, they're so cute. She's only very young, so she was also orphaned. Her mum couldn't feed her properly, okay. so she was hand-raised by a keeper at the zoo, mm. and she'll stay here and be used um, yeah, for education. Oh, fantastic, it's so cute. <laughs> There's an abundance of wildlife here and if you come to Sydney it's a great thing to come and do but one of the best things about the zoo is the view. So these guys have got some prime real estate. It's incredible isn't it? Yeah it's fantastic, a really good view from here. They've got very long tongs as well. This guy's really, I think he's after something. Is this their, Probably one of these carrots. Is this their yeah, afternoon the snack? Yeah, 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 a bit of a, Lovely. a Is that place. what you're waiting for? Who wants it? It's a tong fight, it's a tong battle. <laughs> There we go, you took that. <laughs> Good stuff, should I feed this one as well? What are their names? So we've got Andara here on the left and Jimmy Yu on the right. Okay, and how old are they? Andara here is 10 years old and Jimmy Yu's about three. And do they always slobber on you when you they feed them? They always slobber on you when you feed them. Ew. Yeah, it's a bit gross, <laughs> but we get used to it. I'm sure. <laughs> And anyone can, can do this, can't they? Come and feed yeah, them. Yeah, we have a giraffe and focus encounter here. Oh! There's <laughs> a fight! <laughs> oh, well done! <laughs> and if you ever wondered what the animals get up to at the end of the day when the park gates are closed, well, wonder no further. We're at the new Raw and Snore facility, and this area is a great way to experience Taronga Zoo at night. So you can actually stay overnight and go into the zoo in the evening? That's right, and you also have the opportunity to meet animals like this one. So this is a diamond <laughs> python, oh. um, and you get the opportunity to get up close and personal with animals like this. The Roar and Snore program is an incredible program. It's located here at the zoo, kind of down on the waterfront here, so you get uninterrupted views of the city over the harbour. You get to stay overnight here at the zoo in specially constructed tents, and you get a night view of the zoo. It's the only way that you can actually see the zoo at night time. Of course, these are just a few of the things to see and do around Sydney's famous harbour. But whatever you discover, you'll be guaranteed to take home some of the city's vitality and a real taste of Sydney cider life. <laughs>